<laughs> you are live. Woo -woo. All right. Perfect. My, my face feels somewhat larger than yours in the screen right now. Well, I have my <laughs> camera pretty far away from me. Like, <laughs> is, that, is that deceptive Andre the Giant look though I'm going for? It's the uh, forced perspective. <laughs> yes. So I think it's it's always better for me if I'm a little bit away from the camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm wearing my uh, Carol Baskin from Tiger King meets junior executive blazer outfit today. So that's nice. That is nice. Yeah, yeah. I have my uh, best Easter purple on. Oh, nice. A, a pastel. Nice. Oh, rats. I did the thing again with the timer, so we might have an extra minute or so. Um, okay. Of course, I can always manually advance that. Okay. It is top of the hour, one o'clock, and we are live. So we are, yep. Hey, Millicent, the Facebook um, stream should be open now. It takes just a couple of seconds to get that one through all the Facebook pipes. So I think that one comes live a little bit later than our, our YouTube channel. So if you, if you want to switch back, you should be able, Millicent, to get into the Facebook one now. I see Celissa's out there. So hi, good to see everybody. Thanks for joining. Oh, we've got 17 people already. So excited. All right. Oh, I just remembered one other thing that I need to do on my side. So, Kevin, entertain the troops. Oh. Do, a little, <laughs> do a little tap dance while I do my one. <laughs> my, my circus act yes. is, uh, is very limited, actually. Sing a song, do something there. I think it's going to be uh, just a quick second for me to open the document that I need. Every time. Okay. Yeah. So this is why I didn't, this is why I didn't put the timer in the, in the presentation before, because anytime I move away, it stops. So, uh, but how does it know? I, it's very, I don't know. It's creepy. It's very <laughs> creepy. Some sort of uh computer watching you knows it's, when you move. It's, it slacks off the minute I'm not watching it very closely. <laughs> it slacks off and just, you know, so uh like a, bad employee just slacking off the minute I click away. Oh, look busy. I'm back. Okay. You know what? With 31 seconds left to go on that timer, I'm going to fast forward and there we go. You're out of its misery. And <laughs> <laughs> we will go ahead and get started. It is 102. So hopefully folks have had a chance to come on in and grab a virtual seat. Um, oh, I see Texas and Oh, some song requests for you, Kevin. So next time, next time, we could do maybe a little autocrit uh, karaoke. Oh, or, boy. Yeah, maybe a talent show. I feel like maybe that's a good live stream we could do. <laughs> I, I think you'd better watch me do like, uh, I don't know, work with spreadsheets or something. Some, be yeah. <laughs> my my talent, singing's my not beautiful, so... <laughs> <laughs> hey, if your talent is making a pivot table in Excel, then it is what it is. Embrace that. Embrace that. And or, I'm not like, yes. Or as one of my uh, you know, friends here at Autocrit says, you can't beat a spider diagram. I mean, yes. <laughs> fastest, fastest pie diagrams in the West. Like that's how that goes. So yes. whatever, whatever your talent is, then do it. <laughs> So we've got tons of uh, folks joining us out there from, oh, Kentucky and Texas and North Georgia and Utah. Goodness. Oh, my gosh. Something still might be wrong with YouTube. Gareth and Michael, if you're out there, see if, uh, okay, YouTube's good. Facebook is getting better. All right. Let's do it. So welcome, everybody. We are here in the... Well, I'm going to call it the Autocrit Studios today. Um, this is Beth from Autocrit along with Kevin. Hello, everybody. Welcome. And we are back for Deep Dive Live. Every Tuesday at 1 o'clock, we pick a feature or report or something interesting about the Autocrit application and kind of dig in and go a little bit deeper in a live stream to get even more value out of your Autocrit subscription. So today... We are talking 
sentence starters. You know, we love some alliteration. Sort your sentence starters. <laughs> so I feel very Slytherin when I do that. I couldn't say it five times. That's it's, for sure. Nope. That's a tongue twister. We were practicing it backstage as part of the vocal warm ups, and it was really difficult. So, sentence starters, difficult to say, but a pretty simple concept uh, that can really make huge, serious changes to the way you write serious sentence starting changes. So, a couple of ways that Autocrit likes to look out for sentence starters. And the first one we're going to talk about is if my presentation will cooperate, which of course it's not doing. There it is. Initial character names or pronouns. So guess what that means? It means you're starting a sentence with either your character's name or their pronoun. Simple. So why is that a problem? Everyone needs to know your characters. The point is to build that relationship, get to know those characters like they're real, real people. So the major reason is back to something we talked about a few weeks ago here in Deep Dive Live. Anybody guess what that problem might be? If you are starting all your sentences with either your Characters' names, Bob made a sandwich, Bob ate the sandwich, Bob said the sandwich was good, or pronouns. Instead of saying Bob, he made a sandwich, his sandwich was good, he enjoys a sandwich more than Joey on Friends. So as you can see, with um, when I'm talking through that example, that the, yeah, <laughs> that the problem <laughs> is, it's boring and it's repetitive. So back to our spider men, mm -hmm. right? Repetition. Spider people. Spider. Oh, good. Yes, you're right. Spider people. <laughs> it gets very repetitive and that can be quite boring for your reader. Not interesting to read. Probably not that interesting to write either. So looking at this sentence, right? Norman entered the kitchen and walked to the cabinet. He opened the cabinet door and picked up the bottle of ketchup. He shook it to make sure the sauce wasn't separated before he put it on his hot dog. He hated watery ketchup. So what do you notice about that, Kevin? Just about every sentence starts with a name or, or a pronoun. Yeah. Well, the first thing I notice is, yes, watery ketchup is terrible. And I firmly agree with that. Mm. But you're exactly right. Every sentence starts with he. You know, it's Norman and then he, 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 and you wind up with, bear with me, more he's, <laughs> more he's than Michael Jackson. Hello. <laughs> this is where we pause for the crowd to, uh, you know, keep us with praise for, for the dad jokes. And I, I'll even do it again in case anybody missed it. More, more he's. Than Michael Jackson. <laughs> so if you loved it, let us know. If you hated it, let Gareth know he wrote it. I'm just gonna <laughs> go ahead and say that. So yes, it's he this and he that or she this or she that. How could we phrase these differently? Right? So looking at this paragraph, everyone warm up your keyboards. Would love for you out there watching us live on Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern. If you're watching on the replay, feel free to go ahead and play along as well. Go ahead and pick one of these sentences and give us a quick rewrite here in the com <laughs> here in the comments. So Norman entered the kitchen and walked to the cabinet. Sentence two, he opened the cabinet door and picked up the bottle of ketchup. Sentence three, he shook it to make sure it wasn't separated before he put it on his hot dog. He hated watery ketchup. Sentence four, go ahead and pick one of those and just rewrite it. Considering the context, maybe not considering the context, whatever is easiest for you. Excellent, starting to get some uh, rewrites in already. Entering the kitchen, he walked to the cabinet. Um, watery ketchup is the worst, he thought. 
After opening the cabinet door, he picked up the bottle of ketchup. <laughs> kicked open the cabinet door. I love it. <laughs> kick it. Aggressive ketchup. Free the ketchup. Free the ketchup. <laughs> Absolutely. So loving this. You can see there are probably as many ways to rewrite these sentences as there are authors out there. Watery ketchup is not a good condiment. <laughs> Everyone hates it. Watery ketchup tastes horrible. Exactly. So here's what we at Autocrit had come up with. Kevin, read that for us. You're sure. Good. <laughs> Give Norman, it some feel. <laughs> Norman slipped into the kitchen and over to the cabinet. Rummaging inside, he found the bottle of ketchup nestled behind a murky jar of pickles. Huh. As he left the room, he gave the bottle a vigorous shake to make sure that the sauce didn't stay separated. There was little he hated more than watery ketchup ruining a good meal. Absolutely. So in the willing suspension of disbelief, you have to go with hot dog is a good meal, for sure. <laughs> which it is. It is. I celebrate that. But sure. you can see there are just so many more showing ways to get that point across, right? Mm -hmm. And back to our showing versus telling, this really paints such a strong picture. You know, the, the cabinet door swung open to reveal a bottle of ketchup is, is one, one suggestion from the community. Uh, Ugh, I hate watery ketchup as a direct set of dialogue. So really tons of ways to keep this um, story moving forward in a really interesting and compelling way, right? So, as you can expect, this was a really quick off-the-cuff example, but focusing on that beginning of each of those sentences, you can easily add a little bit more variety and a little bit more detail to what we're putting across. It really kind of opens it up and gives, gives the story more room to, to expand. Um, there is still a use of he in the example that we came up with, and we also have Norman's name in there. Sure. But... If you'll notice, Kevin, it doesn't feel as repetitive, right? No. And, and why is that? Uh, it's the sentence structure that you get into rhythm when you start reading it. It's almost like singing a song. Even if you just move the words around, like he's still in the sentence, but it's just not the first word. So it's kind of like the beats of the sentence as you mm -hmm. kind of go over in your mind. It becomes, it kind of drums into your head a rhythm that you have to kind of break sometimes, depending what you're trying to do, of course. Sometimes it's very effective. But sure. uh, for the most part, you want to limit that to maybe a paragraph or something if you're trying to, you know, have somebody listen to their breathing or something like that. But anyway, you, you want to kind of spread it out, not have your whole book that way, a whole yeah. chapter that way would be awful. It just, Absolutely. It would, you'd be driving crazy. So it's the, it's, the, it's the hidden beats, I guess you could say, of the writing. Yeah, and we talk a lot um, on our deep dive lives about kind of the musicality of of your writing and the tempo and the 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 measures and the beats. So it can be a strong tool to have all your mm -hmm. to have a series of sentences that follow the same structure or that start the same way. If you're doing it on purpose, as we always say in Autocrit, if you're doing it on purpose, absolutely use those tools. What Autocrit can help you do that Kevin will illustrate for us in just a few minutes is, is uh, show you where that's happening and then give you the choice to replace it, yep. move it, reword it, or if you're doing it on purpose, just reject that Autocrit recommendation altogether. And Kevin will get to that in just a moment. Before we jump over there, though, I mentioned at the start, there are two ways. Or the two uh, sentence starters that we always like to look out for at Autocrit, and one was the initial names and pronouns. The second one is the initial conjunctions. So the ands, the buts, the whatevers. And uh, ing words sometimes fold into this as well. So mm -hmm. in the rewrites earlier, we had a few um, ing words starting it off, and that definitely mixes it up. Now, if that's the only solution that you deploy in your writing, it might still get a little repetitive. So let's look at another example. Ha. And I, I highlighted these initial, these starting conjunctions in here. But Sammy wasn't about to rush home. So what if he was late? And so what if Jennifer was angry? Because the truth was he was a little sick of Jennifer so tired of her nagging. 
he, now there's a he right in the middle, but it's not one in a series of three or four. So it's a little bit different. He didn't want to hear about her annoying boss or listen to that cheesy pop music she loved or spend his nights watching bad reality TV because she just had to find out who got voted off the island. Look, I'm thinking I'm about to vote Sammy off the island with this. Sammy does not sound like a very fun and happy person. <laughs> <laughs> so looking at this sentence or this paragraph, this set of sentences, what are perhaps some ways that our viewers out there would like to rewrite one or two of these sentences? So we'll give a, give a little bit of pause here and get those fingers on the keyboards. Let us know maybe how you'd re rewrite one or more. That's a bit of a, that's a bit of a hint. One or more <laughs> of these sentences. Yeah. Was it, was it too obvious? Was it not obvious enough? Because this is awfully wordy and I think it gets the point across, mm -hmm. but it might also get the point across a little excessively. So that might be another hint as well as you're rewriting some of those, uh, some of the sentences in this paragraph and just kind of mixing it up a little bit. So, yep. Mm. Some longer sentences. Yeah, we could pull those together. Maybe a dash, maybe some commas. Maybe, I don't know, a, a nice semicolon. Oh, semicolons always get me excited. I love a semicolon. You know what I love, though? <laughs> I, I love two things. Well, I love three things. One, lists of things. <laughs> okay. Two, colons. Three, ellipses. Yeah. yeah. I what know. About... Huge, huge ellipse person. Ellipsy. You can't forget the semicolon, though. It's, it is something and it's not. You don't... <laughs> it's true. It's a pause for you to stop. Yes. So, oh, there? yeah. Are we done? No, there's more. <laughs> yeah. With a little, a tiny, tiny cliffhanger in the middle of your sentence. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> Love this. Love the, some of these suggestions coming through. Um, this is, yeah, this is uh, a great opportunity, as I was alluding to, to blend some of these sentences together, right? Mm -hmm. We can really become a little more efficient in our use of words here and make it a little bit more um, exciting for the reader, right? So if it's, maybe it's a diet, maybe it's dialogue. And I put this in to kind of quote the, the book, but uh, yeah, it could have, it could have indicated that this is dialogue as well. So maybe, is it a rant? Maybe somebody needs to break in the middle of there and, and break up the, if it is dialogue, break it up that way. Excellent suggestion. I'm, um, commas, uh, making it more efficient. Sammy wasn't about to rush home after work, even if he was late and Jennifer was angry. Not about to do it. Not going to do it. So some really great ways. And I'll show you, of course, we at AutoCrit came up with our own response to this one. So Sammy wasn't going to rush. So what if he was late and Jennifer was angry? The truth was he was a little sick of Jennifer a dash, <laughs> tired of her nagging and her obsession with reality TV nonsense. Ooh, Rita with a good one, make it first person dialogue. So you mm -hmm. can see there are so many ways aside from that long paragraph full of conjunctions and, and not really advancing the story, but really kind of beating a dead horse on the fact that Sammy's not in a rush. He's late. Jennifer's angry, you know? He's, he's kind of sick of her, so he's not that concerned. Make it first person, break it up, make it more efficient for your reader and still get that point across. So you can see a couple of different ways, right, to fix this um, repetitive nature back to the spider people and become a little more efficient, tighten up that writing and make it a better experience for your reader. So with that, how does AutoCrit help you in this. And for that, 
I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Kevin. He's going to walk us through sure. some real live examples. Now, All right, we can put Kevin's screen in there. Yeah, throw my screen up there. Nobody wants to see any bit. I'm going to just, <laughs> just make it the screen and let AutoCrit the application be the star. There you Perfect. go. Perfect. All right, let me jump back over to my first example. So, as uh, Beth was alluding to earlier, what AutoCrit's really looking for is is mainly patterns and overuse of a certain sentence structure. I think that's the, the, the key piece here. The, these sentences aren't written wrong. There's no grammar error necessarily, but it's the repetition and the frequency of use that kind of uh, can be a distractor to the reader. So um, we threw in, as we always do, uh, a lot of our successfully published authors just to show how how some of some other people in the business and industry that have been successful kind of do the same uh handle the the issue and or not handle it very well as we kind of learn from how others are doing it so here i, I brought in a, a book by karen slaughter uh, pretty girls and it was interesting uh as we were going through and, and looking at her actually she's i think she's going to be an upcoming um Possibly Ooh. anyway, an upcoming uh, deep. Uh, uh, what do we call those? The what's the, the score? What's the, the what's, what's the score? What's the score? Yeah. So we were we we're working in with with Karen Slaughter, and we found, amazingly enough, she uses a lot of initial pronoun or names. In fact, we we click on the summary here, and we see in this snippet Ooh. of text, she had sixty one percent of her sentences start with either an initial name or a pronoun. So that's that's quite wow. large. You know, we've we've looked at quite a few. And you usually find that somewhere for fiction anyway, between forty and fifty percent. Usually less than fifty is kind of right around there. It's, you know, somewhere in that that range. So this was actually one of the higher uh, texts we've looked at. That is, it's the highest one I've seen, Kevin. Yeah, it's interesting. And if you look through, obviously, Autocrit helps ama you know, um, with amazing clarity here because it highlights everything for you. It just jumps right out at you um, that you see all the you know initial. Uh, sentence starters there with either a name or a pronoun. And you can kind of see the counts here. Obviously, this is a he, she, a story of some sort. <laughs> There's a lot of them. And and we find it, it, that authors typically follow the same pattern. So I'm going to grab another book by Karen Slaughter. It's actually the, a brand new one that she just came out with. I think it's coming out. Uh, it was out in the UK last week, and it might come out in the US shortly, I guess. Ooh, fantastic. The, the Silent Wife is another one. And I dropped it in here and this one's 54 percent. so still a little bit on the high side but as you see uh when we look at these authors we try to figure out their fingerprint and their their patterns they kind of they kind of mimic as they write um some of these trends so obviously once again you look through and once again she has she has a lot of he and she in here which is fine but it's just a lot of it as you look at this paragraph almost every sentence starts wow another so I'm, we're not saying it's wrong by any stretch, and definitely the, Karen Slaughter is a very famous and, and popular author, so we're not criticizing that, but she definitely has a pattern in the system, and she sticks with it. So her readers uh, you know, anticipate this type of style as well. So so long as you have it and you live by it and you run with it, there's nothing exactly wrong with it. It's just something that Autocrit is bringing to your attention of what it is that you're doing. So I think that's a, a fairly interesting kind of a thought process as you try to understand how Autocrit's working um, is like the not wrong, not right, not a yes or a no thing, but just uh, this is what you're doing. We're kind of giving you information in that. And I thought for fun, I would throw in a, uh, somebody, in this case, George R. R. Martin, oh, um, does Game of Thrones uh, series. He, on the other hand, has 39%. Oh, so wow. this is significant difference even though you think wow george R. R. martin all those characters right how many characters are in the game of thrones there's so many of them well yeah. and then they all die though so they can't well, that's, really, yeah. <laughs> that's it, it's true it's nice and low <laughs> but he has crafted his sentences and paragraphs in such a fashion that he doesn't use as many initial pronoun or names it's kind of fascinating <laughs> Um, when when you look at the, the the tendencies and the uh, trends here, and uh, I'm trying to find a spot where he did actually use it, maybe it was in the next one. I'll have to quick and jump over here. Uh, yes, it was in here. Mm -hmm. So obviously he does use it quite a bit, and this is a, this is actually the first Game of Thrones I, I dropped in. Um, but he also has spots where there's not as much. Like in this case, oh, there's only yeah. one. So he, you know, when he, when he's working this sentence, it's it was going his and then he. 
every single one started with it, but he is a little bit better at varying his sentences with his description and his backstory, maybe his world building type paragraphs, for example. He doesn't always use it. And here's another paragraph. So you can see that it's much more sparsely laid out when he when he drives it home with it and he pulls it back and and, and uh, not so much. Now, so, Kevin, it might yes. also be to do with the pacing that he's mixing up there. Sure. Definitely. It, it handles with the pacing, like I said, the world building, some of the, the coloration he's bringing into the scene and the environment around him. Perhaps he's not always talking about what a character is doing and what a character is going to do or what a character has done. He's, everything is not character centric mm -hmm. sometimes. Whereas if you jump back over here to uh, uh, Karen Slaughter, everything was about he, she, it, you, somebody's doing something or somebody's having something done to them, which is an effective way of with the pacing and how the style of it is, but you can definitely get the feel of a difference when you switch back over to the Game of Thrones where you have you know paragraphs where there's only, say, one or two uh, instances where they uses that technique. So it's just, like you said, it's a pacing. It's just, it's a styling of, of how it works there. So that's just kind of something to think about with initial pronoun and names and, and, and kind of getting a, a hand uh, hold on, on what it is that you're doing with it. Um, and we also uh, mentioned earlier uh, with the sentence starters, not only are we looking at initial pronoun names, we were looking at um, the ing words and as well as the conjunctions. These are the kind of the connecting words that, that goes through. Beth, I don't know if you want to throw back up the, uh, the ketchup example again. I can certainly do that. And while we're pausing, sure, we did get a couple questions in the community. Oh. And this was a slide that I forgot to do. Ah, uh, so no worries. What's a good score? We're talking in particular here about the um, sentences with initial pronoun and name, right? And so there's not really a good or a bad score. What's the right answer? It is, as Kevin is illustrating, it really is a variation by author, right? So yeah. with George R. R. Martin, that's more his style to be um, descriptive around the worlds and it's less character driven um, progress of the story not just because he kills them all, but also because <laughs> there's such a rich world built, you know, it's a fantasy world. So um, it could be, it could be a difference in the structure of the book, the author's uh, own style. It's just typically around 50%. And you can see here a variation between say a conspiracy of bones by Kathy Reichs at 37% mm -hmm. um, and the, other extreme that I picked out of our What's the Score series available on our blog. And mm -hmm. I will put the banner up real quick for us. If you'd like to see more details about any of these, you can see it at autocrit.com slash WTS for What's the Score. But the other end of the of the spectrum in my examples were, were the, um, the next always and right behind it, Virgin River. So a couple of very different books around sure. 52, 50, 50.54 to 52.34 area. Um, generally books are around the 37 to 54 percent. The mm -hmm. first one that Kevin touched on, what was the first one you did, Kevin? It was the Karen Slaughter book, Pretty Girls, and it mm -hmm. shot over 60. I think it was 61 percent, at least the snippet that I uh, was, was pulling there. Yeah, so, that so that's why we, I, I noticed it was kind of a little bit unusual. But then I, I looked at a couple of the other works and I noticed that she has that pattern of that's that's her style. So. Yeah, yeah. So absolutely, um, absolutely difference in style, different um, approaches. But generally speaking, we see majority of them in the all of the books that we've analyzed be right around that. 40 50 percent mark so yep. we're back to the catch-up uh paragraph oh, thank you thank you yeah, so as we're talking about sentence starters uh, you know the other the other flip side of not the pronoun or names but the sentence starters of a conjunction or an ing verb in this case um if you were to have a tendency let's say i want to rewrite this i want to use the you know opening the ketchup he poured a thick line onto the hot dog so if you were trying to you know try to combine because he's these ing words and the conjunctions are combining elements, right? You're trying to combine two things. You got to be careful when you try to do that, when you combine two things that can't possibly be done at the same time. In your mind, you think you might be able to open a ketchup bottle and pour it at the same time. But if you put it in the same sentence, 
you start running into conflicts of what is or is not possible. In this case, opening the ketchup, he poured a thick line. Well, you can't open and pour at the same time. So <laughs> it, it's one of those things that you might say that in your, you know, when you like more like a dialogue thing, but when you actually put it on the paper uh, in, that, in that fashion, it starts, you know, becoming conflicting. And some, you, some readers were going to pick up on it. It just becomes kind of distracting and annoying. Like, you can't be doing that. You can't, you can't run and chew gum and tie your shoes at the same time. You can't just keep adding a whole bunch of stuff in one sentence just to try to combine things. So be careful with combining things. Um, so I want to go ahead and go through a couple of examples. So this is, this is a, a really good technique um, to, you know, add clarity to things though. And oftentimes it can work. Let me pull here. So looking away from the TV briefly, they replied, you know, you, you got it, it, it. It's possible to look away and reply. That's fine. It, what Autocrit is doing is it's just highlighting areas that you should probably look at to make sure, is that possible? Does it make sense? These would be considered areas of, uh, I hate to use the word concern, but, you know, hoping to change the subject, Sadie asked. This That's totally fine. This is a very good use of, of the, the term, but you don't want to do it too often and you want to be careful when you do use it that it's physically possible to make it happen. In addition to the ING uh, sentence starters, another uh, one that always falls into question would be the AS. As to be rid of her, Ma handed Sadie a broom. When you use the, when you start a sentence in this fashion, you'll find that once again you're combining two things. Every time you start a, well, not every time, but most of the time when you start a sentence in this fashion with as as a conjunction, you're trying to combine two different actions at the same time. So it's something else to be cautious of um, as as you go through, because you just want to make sure that in, in this case, what am I looking at here? This is Dan Brown, Angels and Demons. Mm -hmm. So as, as Langdon sat on his brass chest and savored the warmth, and the next down, look down here, as Langdon sat alone. He's sitting a lot, apparently. But he's, yeah, sitting in, very he's, tired. he's sitting and thinking, like he's absolutely gazing into the darkness. So you just need to be cautious as an odd combination of your, your, these are combining elements, and you just want to make sure that you have a strong combination and not mm -hmm. a weak one or one that is totally disappropriate or, or if that's even a word. Yeah. <laughs> to me, it feels it can feel uh, more reasonable that in the Dan Brown examples, as a feeling washed over him, he turned and did whatever. The, it's a feeling and an action as yep. opposed to two actions. So yes. maybe if I'm seeing two actions in your ketchup example around opening the ketchup, he poured a line onto his that's literally at the same time. And, and while some, some readers may, you know, smooth right past that, some may feel huh, something feels weird about that sentence. And then some others may really just say, look, that is not possible. You open it and then you pour the line. Exactly. Pour the ketchup. So it's after opening the ketchup, he poured a thick line as opposed to just saying they're happening simultaneously. Sure. Excellent. And and that, that you'll see that same thing here where he's, as they circled the building, Langdon felt tense. So it was an action and a feeling. Mm. As they walked, he thought about his, the, the facts in his jacket pocket. So we're not, Autocrat's not pointing these sentences out that they're wrong, although it is a little bit unusual that you have that, you know, <laughs> you see you have that pattern in the same sentence. He's, you're a little bit, this is where the repetition comes in. So you got to look at it a couple of different ways. Also the repetition and does it make sense for these actions to be combined? Mm -hmm. So that's where the ing uh, words and the as and the all those and the ands kind of come into play, especially when we're talking about uh, the, the fiction works, right? Um, and I, I thought it was also interesting as we talk about the overall patterns too, is that not only are these useful in fiction, they're also very useful in nonfiction. You'll find that in nonfiction, uh, works of nonfiction, it's kind of flipped. Right now we have... Um, in, in fiction, we typically have much fewer use of the words uh, of sentence starters, which would be ing and the conjunctions. Or in this case, uh, the Dan Brown book had 5% uh, sentence starters in that fashion. But it had, I don't know, I'll run it real quick. I think it had 40% or something with regard to characters, because yeah, 45%. So uh, fiction is typically a lot of character-centered uh, dialogue and things of that nature where you're dealing a lot with characters. Nonfiction, on the other hand, you're dealing a lot with ideas and trying to combine things and trying to either justify something or prove a point or 
Who knows? Nonfiction, but nonfiction typically, not all the time, but typically is less character centric. So when we jump over to a work of nonfiction here, I brought a, a Brenny Brown rising strong work in here. So on the sentence starters, if you remember, Dan Brown was at 5%. Brenny Brown is at 20% almost, 19.27% sentence starters containing an ing word or a uh, or a conjunction. And the reason is in this story, Brenny Brown is trying to prove a point. So, you know, conjunctions are very effective at, you know, the 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 water rose because the sun came out and melted the snow and you know, global warming or whatever, you know, you're usually proving a point or trying to combine an idea or clarify a position that you're taking. Mm -hmm. That's very common things to use and very powerful to use. So you're going to see them more often in your works of nonfiction because, you know, usually trying to tell somebody about something truthfully. So, or trying to, you know, explain something. So in that sense, don't get concerned that, oh, you know, I have 5% or 30% of this or that. What is it you're trying to do? What is your goal? with your work. I mean, if you're trying to explain something, then you're probably gonna have a lot more uh, conjunctions and combining words and things like that as you're trying to, to describe that. Or maybe you're using it too much if you're, you're writing about characters and stuff and yet you're, you're, your character is preaching the whole time and trying to lecture somebody all that, you know, is that, was that your goal with that passage to use those kind of words? Now, Kevin, so, I'm gonna throw a bit of a curveball your way. Ooh, okay. I, I know, I know, get ready. You're always so good at these things. <laughs> we had a question come through. Okay through um, one of our viewers about first person, right? Can we see an example of this when, it, uh, the, when the work is written in first person? I see this Brene Brown book is written in first person. Yep. And I feel like a, more of the non-fictions are written in, in first person. So maybe this is a good example. Talk, can you talk a little bit about how it may differ in first person? Well, obviously, uh, with your initial pronoun and names, you're instead of having, in this case, over here, you have he, she, well, it's you know, primarily third person with a few, a little bit of first person thrown in there with the dialogue primarily. Mm -hmm. um, but you're going to see a lot more he, she's, right? Versus when you go to the first person, I'll run uh, initial here, you're going to see I show up at 41, right? So... It, it, it's it, it it's still the same problem to be honest mm. with you uh it, it's it's all about the repetition I, I i haven't done an analysis to see what when it's used more initial pronoun or names but to be, to be honest it's still the pattern of even if you're writing in first person and you still shouldn't start every sentence with i you know mm. you're obviously going to use it more often than not but it's still about the repetition and carrying it through and trying to vary things up and using your thoughts and uh, of the character versus just saying, I did this, I did that, and then I ran here, I did, you know, it still has the same exact uh, repetitive problem and sentence structure problem you're going to run into, whether it's first person or third person. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, the word use is going to be different. It's going to be I instead of he, she, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but it's it's still the same ex exact problem. I and mean, that's honestly one of the reasons why we didn't throw the comparison on here to uh, published fiction in that sense for for these because it's not really a bad word. I is not a bad word. He is not a. It's not like it's an unusual word. It's it's very common. It's used all the time. We're not saying that the use of forty one occurrences is wrong here. We're just trying to show you the potential pattern issues that might be present. We're not saying right or wrong. So I think that's one of those things that we really love to clarify here at Autocrit um, as we go through some of these things, we dive into them is that we're really trying to help you identify things mm -hmm. rather than say you were wrong. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you brought up the um, the comparison aspect because as you know, I'm out there in our viewership, as you already know, Autocrit, it has this amazing feature to compare your work to specific authors or to general fiction or to a specific genre, for example, romance or horror. Now in these examples, not every report does that um, comparison. Some are just showing you information. And this is one of those reports, the initial pro no, pronouns and names report. Um, you'll see, though we're looking at Brene Brown, um, which is clearly a nonfiction book, mm -hmm. um, it doesn't it's not a comparison report. Um, it is simply an informational report. So yes. it's only looking at the work that that we uploaded. So when you run, spoiler alert, when you run your own work, 
through these reports in AutoCrit, which will be your call to action at the end of today's session, <laughs> by the way. When you run your own work through here, it is simply looking at your own work and showing you your own ratio. It's not comparing your ratio to, say, Stephen King or mm. um, Robin Carr or Kathy Reichs. So it is it is purely based on, on your work and the ratio in your work. Um, so just wanted to clarify that because I noticed you it was still showing as general fiction, but this is not one of those comparative reports. So I wanted sure. to clarify that. Cool. Sounds good. I'm trying to think of this. Oh, I was going to. Ooh. This was a Graham Hancock book, and I threw it up as well, just to kind of once again reiterate the sentence starters. It's much higher in the nonfiction works. So uh, I think it's, it's a curiosity thing, too. Go ahead and throw your work in. Like, yeah. best, your challenge is where, where do you stand? I mean, where, where, how often do you do this? Uh, it's something that a lot of people I don't even know think about until you, you see it in this fashion. So I think it's a, a great exercise just to just to see if, you, if this is something that you need to look at in your work. Absolutely. So as we said, your call to action is to run the initial pronoun and names report and post your score in the Autocrit author community. Now, again, there's no right or wrong score. It's just always really interesting to be able to, with the help of Autocrit, dissect and analyze your work and give it that editing that you can accomplish while still staying true to your own story before you send it off to your human editor. Um, I will say the initial pronoun and names report is free. So if you're a free mm -hmm. forever user, free forever member, absolutely jump in there. This is available to you right now. The second one, what was the name of that second report, Kevin? It's aptly named Sentence Starters. So what you're saying is, <laughs> Wow, why couldn't I remember that? So the sentence starters report, welcome to our show, sort your sentence starters. The sentence starters report is a paid report. It's available with professional and elite memberships. Now, if you're free forever and you've missed that 72 hour window for your $1 trial, you know me, I always have something extra for you. Uh, we're going to go ahead and provide that $1 professional trial for 14 days for $1 for our free forever members. Now, if you're a professional member already, if you are free, if you are a lifetime member, if you are an elite member, you already have access to the report. <laughs> if you want to just give us another dollar, I mean, you could, but you know what? No, we're not about no. that. But for those who are free forever, if you've missed your trial window, um, or if you just weren't ready to do a trial of professional at that time, we're going to open that back up for you. And we will make sure that this link is um, out there in the comments as well. So you can go back and do both the initial pronoun and names report and the sentence starters report, which is, again, a paid report. And uh, share your share your results um, out there in the yes. community. I'm excited. Definitely. Hi, Kevin. Oh, I'm excited. I always like to see numbers. <laughs> We're back to the spreadsheet thing. Yes, Kevin will make a spreadsheet perhaps. So, wow, we're seeing already. Oh, people might be multitasking during class here today. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a, a, yeah, it's. I think it's one of those hidden gems in your writing that you'd hmm. be surprised that to pull out and just take a look at. Yeah, so I'm seeing, um, you know, initial pronouns and names coming in, you know, 40, 50 percent. So, mm -hmm. Looking good out there. Um, sentence starters from Jared, 4.2%. Yeah. So, Kevin, what's what does that tell us about maybe Jared's writing? Well, it's probably work of fiction. That's that right in there with the, the work of fiction. It doesn't good have a know. lot of uh, conjunctions associated. If you if you were to throw it in there and you get 50% on your sentence starters on the uh, conjunctions and ING, you got a problem. Mm, <laughs> yeah, so. I'd, I'd be interested mm. to read that work because I'd be... Uh, <laughs> Sounds like he's mixing it up really well with the with the sentence starters. Definitely. We're getting an, another score coming through 5.8. So, um, the you know the lower the better. Keep those sentence patterns mixed up a little bit. Don't uh, don't run into a very. Oh, yep, it's fiction. You nailed it, Kevin. Way to go. <laughs> I'm a genius. <laughs> 
Oh my goodness! That's somebody's not- gonna somebody's gonna put something like the Constitution or something in there, and, and <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> I'm some, not sure throw me a happening. throw me a crazy thing. I don't know. That's all right. <laughs> Lorem ipsum text. It's something. See, yeah. See what happens. No. Let's see if they can stump me. Maybe that'll be a maybe that'll be a new feature that we have <laughs> called Stump Kevin. Um, that'd be fun, wouldn't it? Oh, uh, it'd be great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> great. I'll be like yeah. the, the guy at the at the carnival where they throw balls at you know try to knock, yeah. <laughs> knock into the water. That'd be just you know just. Be a new feature at Autocrit. Try to dunk Kevin. Dunk Kevin. Oh, if we could hide some Easter egg uh, features in our platform, I would vote for that one. Yeah. Definitely. So uh, I think as we come up on uh, one we we're right on time. It looks like not a lot of other questions coming in through the community. I think we're in great shape, which means Perfect. either it was so boring that no one's listening or no way, not possible. No one has questions, which is terrific. That means we've explained it so well that people are excited just to go out there and, and run these two reports, the initial pronoun and names report and the sentence starters. Again, we'll make sure that that link is available to you. If you've missed your $1 window, we're going to open that back up for you. And back to an earlier part of the show where we shared some of the um, other authors' scores with you. If you want to read more on the what's the score for your favorite author, whether it's Stephen King or Robin Carr or Karen Slaughter, coming soon. <laughs> Go ahead and take a look at autocrit.com slash WTS. Be sure to join us for what's the score live coming up in two weeks. So July 21st, we will be doing What's the Score Live. Check out the event in our Facebook community. If you respond an RSVP yes, then you will get a reminder. Um, If not, just book it in your calendar, write it on your hand, whatever you need to do. And of course, join us back here next week, July 14th. Thank goodness it's 7-14-21 or I'd never get these dates right. So 7-14 next Tuesday, one o'clock on Facebook and on YouTube, we will be talking about customizing your editing experience in AutoCrit. So we've got some really great features. You can set up AutoCrit to work a little bit better with your specific uh, work of art. Mm -hmm. And we will dig into that next week. And with that, We'll sign off. Until next time, it's Bathing Thanks, Thanks so much for joining us.